All right, sitting here with Coach Lane Burroughs and Coach Tony Robichaud. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for being here. And uh, I just want you guys to kind of reflect on kind of what you, what's going on here today and maybe speak about why it was important for you to be here and um, just uh, speak on the foundation and its potential. Lane, would you kind of speak to those items? Sure. I, well, I think it's, it's been a great day. Um, I know I can just speak from a personal standpoint. I need to hear something. I need to hear what Coach Robichaud had to say. Uh, Butch Thompson, Mike Bianco. It's. Uh, I need to hear what I have to say because I think a lot of times we get lost in uh, what we're doing and our job and results and and uh, you know people around us and outside noise and it's refreshing to come to a place where um, you see other men that you respect in the industry and they're struggling with the same things you are and uh, you know a lot of times I think we we struggle as coaches with trust and people we can can lean on and talk to and. Um, man, I just, you know, hearing these guys speak that I, I look up to and respect and being around other coaches and um, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome what you're doing and, and uh, keep this thing going and make it bigger and, and better and get as many people involved. And you got guys like this in here, it's only going, that's going to bring people in. So, uh, again, I just love the transparency and uh, people laying it out online and it, it ain't just about ball. I know that's, it's bigger than ball is the name of the organization, but um, you know, I, like Coach did in his speech, I, I don't want to hear about hitting. I don't want to hear about pitching mechanics and outfield play. I want to hear about struggles and, and, and real stuff that not only us as coaches, but as men, we battle every day. Coach, why, why did you uh, decide to, to come here? What, what made you drive all this way to come to Tupelo, Mississippi? Well, a couple things. Number one, I think it's so important today, uh, simply because if you look at the end of mine, um, you know, it is bigger than ball, bigger than baseball. And, uh, you know, like I've said many of my speeches, you can look in the Bible, you know, it doesn't say that uh, you have to be a baseball player, but it says what kind of man you need to become. And what does that truly mean? Um, you know, I think we've been lied to so much today in our country what a true man is. Uh, the first thing I did was check your speakers and uh, the, the honor and privilege to see these other coaches speak because I think we're all learners as coaches. I and mean, when you can come and you can sit in one location and see these type of guys speak, we play each other and get after each other, believe me, on the field, but we're together off the field. And uh, I think there's some honor in that to be able to understand where those relationships lie. But again, I came because I just think this foundation is important. I think this is the direction we need to be going in. I think we've gone the other direction so hard. As I've said before, our parents today are getting kids, every coach under the sun, a hitting coach, a running coach, a throwing coach, a fielding coach, but they have no life coach. And when they fail, their game never really fails them. It's, it's they fail in life. And um, we have to help them through that right now. And, 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 and then lastly, why I came was, you know, who motivates the motivators? I mean, he's going to work every day, and he's, he's and him and I, all these coaches, our batteries are just getting so, you know, drained. Uh, he's got the boosters, the fans, the winning, the losing, the firing, the hiring. Uh, so much to worry about today, the social media, uh, his players, my players, uh, they're all coming with so much fear and anxiety today. And we have to be equipped better today. I, I'm equipped to help the pitchers and the hitters, and so is he. But the catch to this is all are all these coaches, are they equipped to handle the fear and anxiety, the high suicide rate, the drug rate, the alcohol rate, every addiction's at an all-time high today. So, so are we really versed in that? We're, 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 you know, we, we have coaching degrees, but we're not professionals in that realm. And I think being able to, you know, be able to set these foundations up to help lead these coaches and, and feed them so that they can now go back with a charge that battery because again, it's, it's, it's tough getting up every day because people are drawing down off our batteries all the time. I know what both of you are going to say to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. When we talk about legacy, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you my personal feel. As long as it's pointing to something greater than yourself, it's okay to talk about. I know it makes a lot of people uncomfortable to talk about your own personal legacy. But what do you deep down, I want, I want to be real with me, what do you deep down uh, want people to remember about you as a coach and a man? Well, I, number one, and I fail every day. I talked about I want to be known as a good husband, a good father. Um, 
I grew up kind of crazy, and and uh, you know it's uh, at the end of the day. And Coach talked about it in his speech earlier. I mean, uh, it's uh, it ain't gonna be about the wins. It's gonna be about uh, the people whose lives you changed, you poured into, uh, what they became as young men. And and uh, you know I think we're at a time now where it's a weird time to be a coach, so to speak. It's uh, I think uh, there's a generation, our whole country, but our generation is under attack, and uh, we're dealing with stuff now that you know quite frankly. When we were all growing up playing, uh, it was there. You just didn't talk about it. You know, he talked about things like suicide, and those are hard things to talk about. But uh, as far as legacy, look, um, just pouring into guys. Why did we get into this game in the first place and this uh, profession? And I think if to a man, we'll all say it was uh, to make a difference in uh, young men's lives. Because look, we're not all going to be big leaguers, but we're all going to be husbands and dads one day, and they, that ain't ear candy. And and uh, you don't say that, just, we mean it. And I think that's, uh, you know, if somebody say I was a good husband, a good father, and, and uh, made a difference in a positive way, I mean, I'm good with that. That's, that's a good enough legacy for me. Anything to add? Well, I, I agree with him. I echo that. I think our, our whole, uh, you know, a career is something that you do, a call, and it's something that Christ wants you to do. And I think too many of us get caught up, as I did when I first started, into a career, a baseball career. And then somewhere along the way, you know, the Lord spoke to me and explained the difference between a career and a calling. And so I think when you, when you now have a calling, now you start to realize it's to grow him from a boy to a man. Because I think ultimately, when a man becomes a man, everything else in his life falls into place. And, uh, and, and, and my legacy, I, I, I tell them all the time, you know, I, I don't, if you forget about me in two weeks, you've lost nothing. But if you forget about Christ in two weeks, you've lost everything. So my legacy is not to, to see how many people can follow me uh, as much as see how many people I can get to follow Christ. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate you. Being Absolutely. Here. Thank, Thank you. you.